very sorry to wake you up, Mr. Watson. But it's a common lot this morning. Miss Hudson has been knocked up. She retorted a... What is it then? A fire? No, a client. It seems that a young lady has arrived in the considerable state of excitement, who insists upon seeing me. She is now waiting in the sitting room. Now when young ladies wander about, wander about the Metropolitan at this hour of morning and knock sleepy people up out of their beds, I presume it's something pressing which they have to communicate. Should it, be, should it prove to be an interesting case, you would. I am sure to follow, follow it from the outset. I thought at any rate that I should call you and give you the chance. My dear fellow, I would not miss it in a heartbeat. Good morning, madame. My name is Sherlock Holmes. This is my intimate friend and associate, Dr. Watson, before whom you can speak as freely as before myself. Ha! Huh. I am glad to see that Miss Hudson has a, a good sense to light the fire. Pray draw up to it, and I shall order you a cup. Hot cup of tea, for I observe you are shivering. It's not the cold that makes me shiver. What is it then? It's fear, Mr. Holmes. It's terror. Do you know me then? No, but I observed the second half of a return ticket in the palm of your left glove. You must have had started early, and yet got a good drive in the dog cart along heavy roads before you reached the station. There is no mystery, my dear madame. The left arm of your jacket is splattered with mud in no less than seven places. The marks are perfectly fresh. There is no vehicle save a dog cart which throws the mud that way, and only when you sit on the left-hand seat of the driver. Whatever your reasons may be, you are perfectly correct. I started from home before six, reached Leatherhead at twenty past, and came in by the first train to Waterloo. Sir, I can't stand the strain no longer. I shall go mad if it continues. I have had no one to turn to, none, save only one who cares for me, and he, poor fellow, can be a little of a little aid. I have heard you, I have heard of you, Mr. Holmes. I heard of you from Mrs. Fettendosh, whom you helped in the hour of her sore need. It was from her that I had your address. Oh, sir, do you not think that you could help me too, and at least throw a little light through the dense darkness which surrounds me? At present, it is out of my power to reward you of your services, but in about a month or six weeks, I shall be married with the control of my own income, and then at least you shall not find me in Fair and touch. Ah, yes, I recall the case. It was concerned with an opal tiara. I think before it was, it was before your time, Watson. Okay, <laughs> I was like, what is? You need a loot roller. You need to just take like... Go like this. <laughs> you know me then? I've seen you come by train this <laughs> way. No, I'm waking. You are. <laughs> was concerned with the opal tiara. Yeah, go back. I think it was before... Hola! Ah! 